Hi friends! Hello! Hi! Welcome back! It is time for another early horror of 2024. Today I'm gonna go see Imaginary. This is a Jeff Wadlow film. He also directed Fantasy Island, Truth or Dare, The Curse of Bridge Hollow. What else, other than him being a director, do these films all have in common? They're all rated below 6 on IMDb and you know what? Even though technically I am a certified Rotten Tomatoes critic, I know you can't always trust the ratings. And that's why I go into these with a perspective of telling you what the film is actually like without spoiling it so that you'll know if it suits your taste. I am a little bit pessimistic. If I'm going to be truthful, I've got to be straight up about this one. The film is about a woman who returns to her family home with her stepchildren and soon her younger stepdaughter finds a new friend hiding in the basement. I have not watched the trailer for this one. I want some surprises. I don't want to see the jump scares, but I do know the mascot of this film is the little bear. Also, when I say that, it means whatever I show you trailer wise, I've already seen the film when I edit this, so I'll never show you something that's gonna spoil the film. The film stars Dee Wonder Wise, Tom Payne, and Betty Buckley. It also does have the tag psychological. So is this gonna be a Blumhouse jump scare filled popcorn film? Which, you know what, I'm fine with. There's a place and there's a time for that. And you know what, this might be the time and place for that. Or is it actually gonna be a psychological nightmare? There's only one way to find out. Come with me, let's go check out Imaginary at the cinemas and I'll tell you if it's worth your time. Spoiler free, let's go. Yo, yo, yeah. Unfortunately, I was right. <laughs> that film, I am so confused. I am, oh man, I, I hate that it's this early in the year and I'm ranting again. I am so confused how that got greenlit. I do have a theory though. Let's start from the start. This film is about a stepmom who is moving her family into her the house that she grew up in. And when she moves in there, uh, her youngest stepdaughter starts interacting with an imaginary friend that's a teddy bear. And from there, the film gets dangerous as we discover there is more to this teddy bear than we could ever have imagined. I actually had to go back and I've had to change the blurb that you guys saw earlier in this video because I believe the blurb that they put on IMDb gives away a lot, but I only think that's because there's not much to this film. There is so little that makes sense. <laughs> Guys, this film was just an absolute mess. There was no chemistry between... Holy shit. <laughs> Even my camera's had enough of it. <laughs> Let's start with the concept alone. It's just bizarre. The film seems like it's going to be this twisted story and I will give it credit it is psychological at points for sure more than I thought it was going to be um, but I thought it was going to be you know this trip into the past and their past traumas coming to light and it is that but it confuses and pushes along the story in such an odd way. I kept trying to pin down what was wrong with this film and I feel like I've come to the conclusion that everything was a little bit off. I felt like the dialogue was really heavy and intense and they try and get you information in such a weird way. It feels forced, it feels awkward, there is no chemistry between any of the actors. I felt like the child actor in this film was really just really odd, uh, the way that she talks, the way she presents certain information. And then I wondered if it was just the tempo because the pacing of the film feels strange as well. It's rushed through and the way they try to over exaggerate certain points just to get you into a scene for no real reason that's got anything to do with the plot. Again, with the dialogue, a lot of that, just talking about absolute nonsense for no reason, not leaving anything to the imagination, which is really, 
strange for this film. And I'm pretty sure that was their teaser trailer when this film got announced. It was a blank screen that asked you to imagine what you were seeing and playing scary sounds. I don't know what that film was because what this film was was completely different. It was over the top, it was in your face, so many reveals. You can see monsters, all that stuff within the first 10 seconds. It is such a wild film that throws so much at you and nothing is interesting. And then I wondered if it was the editing and the way it was put together because the pacing does seem strange but I think it feels strange because the editing is just there's no real timing and I say that with comedic timing for any of like the you know silly jokes they want to put in there any of the jump scares as well everything just feels off and I feel like the editing could be to blame because then that would make sense why the acting and chemistry feels off maybe with the reverse shots of conversations not being put together properly and even when scary things were happening they would cut to the reaction like a fraction of a second too late and you've just got to be on the ball with that kind of stuff and it wasn't offbeat in a fun way a campy way or you, you know just in a way that throws you for a loop so that it double bluffs you it, it everything for this film just feels a little bit off and a little bit straight to VOD it felt like it should be a film that should be streamed if that everything that was meant to be scary for this film people were laughing their heads off in the cinema and I was one of them I could not believe some of the dialogue they made those actors say to try and create tense moments or scary things I could not believe even some of the direction of like things they had to do with their hands to create these kind of physical scares or just off-putting moments none of it worked. I, I just don't understand what they wanted this film to be because at the end of the day the bigger picture and the message behind the film doesn't even make sense. This film is full of plot holes. It is just a crazy mess and I have a theory. I do have a theory as to why this could be. I believe that this film, this is a very big stretch, I believe that this film could have been created for the sole purpose of making a franchise, which is not entirely a stretch, but a franchise that could be turned into merchandise. The bear, Chauncey, and a lot of the practical effects, we will get to that in a second, but practical effects and um, stylization of the film can be replicated for, you know, haunted houses at Halloween Horror Nights, which Blumhouse is always interconnected with. We've got Chauncey, the way he looks. It just seems like everything was created for a visual representation of the film instead of anything not that it had to be deep. I wasn't expecting it to be deep. Just make me scared. Give me a jump scare. I felt like the story really lacked and we were just trying to live in whatever would match these visual cues. The thing that the film did well was it utilized practical effects and special effects makeup. A lot of it is straight up practical effects, painted sets, these amazing rooms, it didn't match the story that much. It kind of matched the idea of the imagination, but it felt really forced to get there because it felt so awkward from where we started and the progression through learning about the characters, going through the character arcs, the chemistry between them, the dialogue, everything was so strange and off-putting. Once we get introduced to any practical effects and we really get to see that shine, I feel like the actors were just flailing. And when I told you that the editing time, like the tempo and the comedic timing or horror timing, scare timing was completely off, because of the practical effects, you have to be really careful with that. I know with CGI it looks fake, but with practical effects you can tell how people do it. So they're giving too much time to some of, you know, the scary moments where you could just to see exactly how they did it or exactly how someone's face was painted. Practical effects are a good thing and I don't think we should stray away from that and I think a lot of horror fans still very much appreciate them but you also have to take into consideration 
good filmmaking. You can't just slap some practical effects on and be like, hey, we listen to you. And for me, that's what gave this film a weird sense of making it almost like a haunted attraction that they go through, that the characters go through, instead of a film <laughs> that uh, has a complete storyline that actually makes sense. It is so holy and so strange and maybe just more convoluted than anything because when you strip it all down, it's a very A to B story, but they went through all of the weird the weirdest conclusions to try and get there and sometimes you got to keep it simple stupid. <laughs> Somehow this film tried to do so much to get from A to B and be creative and imaginative to do so that it completely loses the audience on the way. It's like it tried to be this creative nightmare but really it was its own universe or all, own new franchise full of really tight tropes with bad direction all around. I honestly wasn't expecting it to be this bad and even at the start I'm like man we can still bring it back, we can still have some scary moments but all of the reveals from the start it just really messes up any sense of tension for the film and then because the film is based on imagination I'm really surprised that <laughs> once that was done we we went with all of these tropes and just bad dialogue lines and bad reaction times and it could have just been such a fast, fun, in and out popcorn horror, but instead they just took its time to, to wind around the strangest, the strangest scenes I've ever seen. <laughs> I feel like the film visually looks great. I feel like the idea of the film must have somehow come from a couple of drawings and some ideas about an imaginary friend and how that would appear to a little kid. And then from there, they almost did the post-its around it to try and make it into a cohesive story, but it just doesn't work out. It has to be that way. And you know what? I want to know I'm wrong. <laughs> I really want to, I want to know how this film got put together. That's what I care about because I am so confused why I saw that on the big screen. And you guys know me. I don't want to not like anything, but I really do think those those people who are interested in the storyline and who like visuals, this one is still probably, probably a watch at home. It's probably better for you to go out and there's a lot of horror movies coming out in the next couple of weeks. And I feel like if you are strapped for choice and you don't know whether to see it in the cinema or not, it's probably better just to save this one for streaming at home. I think seeing on a small screen might help it. You could just see everything, and because of the practical effects, it just, and the timing of editing in and out of those scenes, it just took away from any tension, and the dialogue, the delivery, the chemistry, everything I've mentioned, it took me out of it. It was not immersive, it was not believable, it was just odd. <laughs> It was an odd one. For originality, I'm gonna get a five out of 10. Five for the imagination part. I do really, really, really love that they're doing practical effects in modern films. I just don't think that this is the way we wanna see it done. Um, we want a big lead up, then you can have your reveals. You don't just throw whatever, whenever, and don't think about the timing. That's just not how we wanna do it. And for scare, I'll give it a four. That's what I thought of imaginary. I did not think I would dislike it as much as I did. I thought I'd probably be in the middle of the road when I said I was pessimistic. That's what I thought. I thought I was like, oh, I'm going into this not really sure about how this is going to go, but I was hoping I was going to be a fence sitter. And unfortunately for me, that was a negative experience. <laughs> I did a video recently about Love Lies Bleeding, had a very different experience than this. So I'd love if you could check that one out. It's a crime thriller from A24. Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye, friends.